Hi, this is Heather Derome from heatherderome.ca and from the sonatasandpartitas.com. This video is just a little addition to a video that we shared recently about the G minor fugue. Um, when I mentioned that in the exposition, Bach, instead of going tonic, dominant, tonic, dominant, he goes from the tonic to the subdominant. And I wanted to expand on that a little bit because it's easy to think that when Bach does something different that we think, oh, he's being artistic. But when arranging the music for um, from the violin to the guitar, we often found little, like, unusual things. And it's always really interesting to try and do it the usual way because whenever you try that, you actually run into a problem. And so you see that in Bach's composition. It's not that he's just thinking, oh, I'm going to be different and artistic. It's like he runs into a problem and he finds a solution for it. And so I would like to look at this fugue in that regard. So it starts off, and then we end up on the tonic. So it starts on the dominant, and it lands on the tonic. Now let's say we try to do what he didn't do, which is to go up by five instead of down by five. So for example, following the basic rule of thumb for fugues, the subject would have been answered starting on A. Or down here. And it would have landed on the dominant. So that would have been a dominant answer. But instead, Bach answered it like this. And he landed on C minor. So it's a subdominant answer. Now, just as a little aside, the subdominant is not called the subdominant because, like, it's one scale degree under the dominant. So there's so, fa, and that's the subdominant. The dominant is the dominant, it's five above, and the subdominant is five below. So, going back to the subject, start on the dominant, we end on the tonic. Now, if Bach would have just moved that thing up, by five, he would have to start on A instead of G. So he's landed on this, but he's going to go. It doesn't work harmonically. And so this points to something that David Ledbetter pointed out in his book and that I also studied um, a little bit more extensively with Jonathan Leithwood. And that is when there's the fifth scale degree. So we're in G minor and D is the fifth scale degree. So when the fifth scale degree is in the subject, which it almost always is, near the beginning, then in the answer, instead of Bach just moving it up five, it will become the tonic. And that's what happens here. So he has, and then it's on the tonic, like that. So that is why that answer is in the subdominant. But let's have a look at the other fugues in the Sonatas and Partitas. So the second fugue, it's got the dominant right near the beginning. We're in A minor, and it starts on E. So let's see, does he answer it instead of going up five from E, which would take you to B? He goes to the tonic. So, so let's just see, is that another answer in the subdominant? It's not, because here what Bach does is when he has a little chance to inconspicuously fudge it and get back on track, he does. So here, um, in the subject, it goes up by four. E, A. Well, in the answer, he goes up by five. And so when he has that chance to kind of inconspicuously just alter the subject a little bit to get back on track, he does. But let's have a closer look. The first thing he has is that semitone. Well, he can't alter that because we wouldn't buy it. And then he has the octave drop. Well, that's important too. Then his first chance is just go up a fifth instead of a fourth. Most people don't even notice. 
and that allows him to cadence on the dominant. So he's got an answer in the dominant. So now in this one, we have tonic dominant, not tonic subdominant. Now let's have a look at the other fugue. The third fugue in the sonatas and partitas. Got a nice long subject. Okay, again here it starts on the fifth scale degree. So it's going to be answered by the first scale degree, and so it is. Well, here again, it starts off with a second, and then in the answer, he it just leaps a third. So if he would have started his answer exactly a fifth above the subject, he could have gone. wouldn't have worked harmonically because he needs a tonic chord here. But his second note would be E. So here he, he gives himself his tonic chord, but then he just jumps to the second note E. And it passes. We don't complain about it. We know it's the same tune. But let's look at the first fugue again because, again, like if Bach could have done that, why didn't he? Well, here... Let's see when he could have, like, fudged it and got back on track. Well, he has to have his repeated notes. He can't go... Now, we would know that's not the same tune. And then he goes down by step. Well, he can't make that note go up a step because then it would have to be repeated again. So then it would just... That. We wouldn't buy it. So that doesn't work. And it's going down again, so he can't do it there. He wouldn't do it in the middle of 16th notes. And then, then if he brought that down, he would have to go, it would just sound too different. So in this particular subject, he didn't have a chance to fudge it. So he just put the answer right in the subdominant. So have a look at the other tutorials um, with this new information and see what you think. I hope you found this helpful. As always, let us know what you think by commenting below. Or you can subscribe to our non-promotional newsletter at sonatasandpartitas.com.